Hey, what's up? Zach here, and I am at the Nike New York headquarters to test out the all-new Converse All-Star BB Trilliant CX. I am here at the Nike court, as you can see, with players who are a lot better than me. So let's get into them. And first of all, huge thanks to Converse for bringing me out here to New York to, number one, check out the headquarters here with amazing basketball court, amazing facilities, but also to get me a pair of the Trillion CX. However, as always, even though I'm sitting here in the mothership, all opinions, likes, dislikes are still my own. Now the most striking part of the uppers of the Trillion CX, I'm guessing to most people, is the shoelace guard, which is one of the only ones of its kind, at least in modern basketball shoes, it does take some inspiration from some old school shoes. However, the thing I like about it is, is you know, I've seen some attempts at shoelace guards, but they can be really encumbering. Whereas this one is nice and light. It really doesn't do anything to you. It's mainly just another layer of upper over the shoelaces. So, you know, if you look at it on the upper durability test, 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, this is the terry cloth version of it, which is super nice, you know, the touch. That is gonna wear down a little bit faster. Now on an NBA court or, you know, hardwood court, the friction's not gonna get high enough for that to really matter. So that's not a big deal. However, on an outdoor court, that is going to still rip through. However, if you're just looking for another layer of protection on your drag foot, you can use both of them for the left and right shoe just on your drag foot. So now you got two of them for one shoe if that's what you wanna do. And like I said, these are a little bit more of a lighter shoe. So just having a little bit of an extra protection around the shoelaces and around the dorsum of your foot, does just give a little bit more of a maximalist feel to a shoe that is very light and very speedy in nature. Now, once you actually get the shoelace guard off, you'll notice that the ankle collar is swooped in pretty deep on the medial and lateral sides. The Achilles does get up pretty high in there. The heel counter is pretty high. However, because the heel counter is all made of foam, this is gonna have some heel slippage issues for higher arch feet or if you're putting an orthotic that is really bulky in there. There is no runner's knot in there. However, you can take out the shoelace guard elastic strap and then actually get the lace through there so if you are experiencing heel slippage you can actually get the lace through there you can fish that hook through there as well to get the shoelace guard on but it's going to take a little bit of a jimmy rigging so just kind of watch out for that now looking at the breathability test of the trillion cx the first thing i look at is the lace line which i think is really cool it's it's this kind of quasi integrated lace line the lace is lay flat against the uppers, which is really nice. So it's a very comfortable lockdown. The one thing you gotta watch out for though, is these did heat up 157.5 degrees, cooled down another 87.6 degrees. They're gonna cool down pretty fast, number one, because it's a very light shoe, number two, because it heated up so much. But if you look at the breathability mapping of this thing, the airflow map, Really the only place you're getting egress is the proximal tongue, not even on the distal tongue. And that's just because it's, it's not really attached to anything up front. So because there's no meshing in the uppers, right? It's a solid upper. That number one gives a lot more containment for how light the upper is, but it does not allow a lot of airflow. Like I said, the one thing it has going for it is it is so light, so it's hard to heat the shoe up because it's just, it's not bogging your foot down a lot. So when you have them on foot, they aren't encumbering whatsoever. They don't feel like they're gonna heat up a lot, but if you do put these in a very hot, humid environment, they may start to hold on to a little moisture and heat. I think if you keep them in climate controlled environments, like you know an indoor basketball court like, like I was in that has air conditioning, you should be just fine. And when you get into the midsole, this is where I, I think Converse is really trying to stake their claim. This is a very, very, very bottom light midsole foot. Now the shank in here is conspicuously absent and what that does is, is it makes the shoe pretty pretty flexible. Now that is nice for getting very 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 shifty because that zoom air unit in the forefoot is just enough to give you just enough buoyancy in the forefoot, enough forgiveness in there to where you're not pummeling through the shoe. It is much better than its predecessor, I will say that. But without the shank, this is still a super, super flexible shoe. That being said, an orthotic in here, I would say a low profile orthotic is really gonna help if you want something just a little more rigid under your foot. Now, when you look at the bounce height test, you really gotta check out the layering of the midsole and kind of the intentionality of each layer of it to really kind of extrapolate what you're finding on the bounce height test. Now, it, that strobe board is very padded and very shock absorbing. The only thing is, is a, after a little bit of time, once you bottom it, it's gonna harden up a little bit more like a traditional strobe board. So honestly, the bounce height test on these is probably gonna get better 
as the shoe gets a little bit older. Now with the lack of a shank, remember the reverberations or the energy that's coming down from that ball bearing or from your foot are gonna get dispersed throughout this entire shoe versus kind of like a shank, which almost kind of separates the rear foot and the forefoot. It kind of takes a lot of energy, turns it back into kinetic energy. Whereas if there is no shank, it just allows more for shock absorption that shock absorption is going to turn to heat and that's going to bottom out the foam a little more. If you look at the balance height test, I guess we'll just give the numbers, 29 centimeters in the heel and then 42 here in the forefoot. And that's not surprising having a zoom air unit in the forefoot, but I think it would have gotten higher if not for, you know, a little more shock dampening strobo board. And when you can really extrapolate from all this, these shoes are meant more for shifty, more smooth footwork on the ground. These are meant to be much more of a flexible shoe, a shoe that you can actually feel the ground in, even though there is a thick zoom air unit in these. That's why these are a really good indoor pickleball shoe too, because there's so much flexibility in the shoe, so much malleability in this shoe. In terms of an aerosol, I, I think these are meant for people with stronger legs or someone who can actually put a low profile orthotic in the shoe. But just looking at really every layer of this from the CX foam being so bottom light to the show board being really shock absorptive, plus the thick zoom air unit. It really went away from the old Converse basketball line, made it much more of a forgiving shoe underfoot. But like I said, if you want to increase the rigidity of that, a low profile rigid orthotic is probably where you want to go. The outsole tread on the CX is really intuitive and I wish other companies would do this, is make the aggressive herringbone right underneath of your big toe joint. Sometimes they'll put it being linear or they'll put flat pads under there for more grip. I actually find just the herringbone is good enough down there and I did notice when I was planting my foot down really hard, this was gripping much better. Now the rest of it is, is basically just a grid pattern that, that kind of swoops in. It's a little bit wider in the heel and then gets a lot more narrow in the forefoot. I found this does take about five to 10 minutes of rubber warming. After that though, I was getting some pretty good cutting. I don't know if you can see me on the other end of the court, but I really was able to put the brakes on even around a lot of people a lot taller than me and a lot better than me. And I still had enough confidence to kind of plant get the other direction. So that was really nice. I, I did notice these do pick up a little bit of dust. However, I noticed if I just wiped it down with my jersey, it was fine and it really didn't affect the grip all that much. I think because of the wider lattice of the outsole tread, which, which is nice. And looking at the speed ratio of the Trillion CX, there's actually two speed ratios. I did it once uh, with the cover on and off. This cover actually does have some weight to it. These come in at a 2.68 without the cover and then a 2.42 with the cover on. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Like I said, these are speedy shoes because the foam is so bottom light. I know I keep talking about the bottom light foam, but it is just worth mentioning again and again. Plus, because these shoes are just kind of unencumbering in general, so flexible in general, they really do allow a lot of speed if, if you've got strong feet and strong legs. So I think someone, like I said, looking to make, you know, a little bit quicker shift your movement on the ground, these will really get you going. It's just for launch, like I said, once again, just like the bounce height test, if you want something to assist you with launch in these, then a low profile rigid orthotic will really go a long way. And on the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, this was very surprising. I mean, not even a millimeter of damage on this rubber. Drometer comes in at a 15, which is, you know, decent for a basketball shoe. It's, it's not crazy, but I think the additives in the rubber or whatever the rubber is actually made of uh, is really resisting a lot of wear. So, um, like I said, I think, you know, especially because of the breathability test, these are more meant for indoor play, especially because of the no shank. Hardwood is gonna be much more forgiving. Rubberizing, much more forgiving for these. But for the lattice shape of the rubber and how thin it is, the durability profile is actually really good. But by far my favorite part of the CX was its fit. Um, previous Converse models were a little bit unforgiving for me. These, especially in the terry cloth colorway, are some of the most comfortable basketball shoes I've put on this year. I am partial to terry cloth because of Pete Sampras and his old school tennis polos being terry cloth. My dad used to always have them. Then he'd hand them down to me and I used to always love wearing them. They just felt so cool. This just harkens back to like my youth tennis days, this material I just love, especially because Pete Sampras is one of my favorite players. But but uh, the different models of the shoe are gonna be more or less forgiving. The Terry version and the Jersey material version are going to be a little bit more forgiving than the other ones. Most of them will fit true to size, narrow, medium, foot can go true to size. If you're a 2E, I probably would be trying to go 
true to size on these just because you want to be able to use these back eyelets for the shoelace protector, right? So if you go up a half size, you're gonna have to use the runner's knot. So I would say everything but a 4E, I probably would be just trying to go true to size on these. And in terms of the snake bitten foot, I think what's the more orthotic in these, tendonitis, heel pain, ball of foot pain, especially ball of foot pain, does really well. Without the orthotic, like I said, they become like very, very flexible. So for shifty movement, for you know really fast footwork, they are great. But if you are any bit snake bitten, then I would say even just like a low profile orthotic, like the Move Game Day or the Power Step Pulse or the Pinnacle Low, any one of those like lower orthotics do tremendous in these because if you get too bulky of an orthotic, I think the heel slippage issues might start to come into play for you versus if you don't have them in there, then it's not really a big deal. And getting into the performance of the CX, I kind of alluded to it with the midsole section, but these are incredibly shifty shoes. But because of the shape of the midsole, not, not so much what's in the midsole, that's what gives it most of its balance. These shoes don't provide stability in terms of the midsole itself. Remember that the shank is, you know, non-existent in these basically. So it gets all of its balance from the overall shape and how low to the ground these feel. You really get a lot of contact for a shoe that has air in it and that has air between the ball of your foot and the ground. I still felt an incredible amount of tactile sensation in these shoes, even you know with the CX foam and the air in there. So I would say these do their best work in terms of a shiftier player, point guard for sure, shooting guard. Uh, you know, a small and a power forward. I, I think if you're more of the wing type, I think these are a really good asset for you. However, if you are in kind of the bigger category, you're gonna want a little more of a rigid orthotic in there to get all the benefits, that structural support in the shoe for all the force you're putting into it. Uh, that way you get the benefits of all its, its shiftiness and, and just how light it feels underfoot. The thing that I was impressed with with these was number one, how airy they felt, but number two, I didn't feel like I was going to roll my ankle in them either. And I didn't have a runner's knot in them. I think even with the runner's knot, you get a little bit more. So definitely from previous versions until now, this is a, it's quite a step up. So I would say if you like the older versions, you're going to love this one. And if you're a fan of shoes that feel very bottom light and just very balanced low to the ground, this is really it. Like I said, bigger player, a little bit more force into the shoe. You're gonna to wanna to augment them a little bit though. All right, so let me know what you think about the Trillion CX. Are you a fan? Are you going for something else? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see a shoe that's kinda of like a, a bigger sibling to the Trillion CX, the Nike Sabrina one going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.